Hey everybody, Sean and Allison from Spoken Garden here. Hey guys. Hey guys, happy Plant Chat Friday. Hey. It's Friday. Happy Friday to you. Yeah. And we're talking about a beautiful plant today, an azalea. Azaleas, yeah. You might know them uh, just because you've seen them around. You might have them in your yard. But did you know that they're all in the genus of rhododendron? Yeah, they're basically Pretty kind cool. of like a mini rhododendron, kind of. Yeah, they have smaller leaves, they have smaller flowers. Yeah. They're actually a lot smaller in stature, or can be. So, but they're all from the genus of rhododendron, and then it gets more specific as you get into the species and the cultivars. That's cool. And, you know, we have some beautiful, gorgeous plants around our yard. We cannot oh, yeah. wait to show you. They're all mostly in full bloom. They usually bloom in mid to late sp uh, spring, mm -hmm. so right about now. And all of these were planted by my grandparents 50 plus years ago, so they are old, mature plants. Yeah, guys, they're they're gorgeous. They're big and beautiful, and you know we have actually uh, some evergreen ones, and we have some oh, deciduous yeah, I know, that's ones. Cool. And a you, variety. yeah, you might not have known that that azaleas do come in deciduous and evergreen. So let's take a look at what we have. We're going to teach you a little plant care and some things to do after they flower. Okay, you guys, so we're out in our front yard where most of our azaleas are located. Uh, we have one in the backyard, right, Sean? Yeah, I think just, just one. one. Yep. We have roadies in front and back, but um, the azaleas, front yard, are just pops of color all over the place. Now, this one isn't really like in full bloom yet, but we just wanted to start here. So just look at this gorgeous color, you guys. Wow. So beautiful. Oh, man. Yeah, uh, this year, it's not covered in these, but in years past, it has been covered in those blooms all over the place. I know, and it's interesting. We were, Sean and I were wondering why this hasn't really popped like it normally does at this time of year. There are blooms or buds everywhere, and it looks like it's about to pop. So we're hopeful that those will um, come to life. But mm -hmm. we're wondering, um, you know, this plant has really is really healthy. It's really spread out and grown and gotten massively big. So mm -hmm. if you can see here, we need to prune this. This plant has this um, big branch that's kind of covering yep. this hellebore oh, over here. Oh, we're hellebore. I know. Ah. So Sean will talk a little more about the pruning care and whatnot, and when is the right time to prune the azaleas. So we'll get to that in just a bit. But if you can see though, we look at, we've got all these buds coming in. Oh yeah, let's take a look at those little buds there. A lot oh, of buds. Yeah. Yeah, it could be just a little delay. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. It's interesting. The thing is, you guys, we're going to talk in generalities today on this on this plant chat because we don't know the actual cultivars of these azaleas. Again, we didn't plant them. Yeah, they're like over 50 years old. They're really old, beautiful plants. Yeah. So this is a deciduous variety. We know that it loses its leaves over the the fall and winter. Yeah, guys. So uh, Allison just showed you the deciduous, one of our deciduous azaleas over here. Here's one of our evergreen right that I'm right next to oh, here and it is one. just gorgeous now this year it has flowered profusely I don't I can't remember I, in the last couple of years when it's flowered this much me neither it, you guys it is looking so beautiful it's really healthy this is our evergreen this is one of our evergreen azaleas and you can see if you look at the the leaves and the flowers they're kind of small they're they're really small uh, compared to like an actual rhododendron and we'll show you a comparison of that in just a minute but these plants are so versatile and you know they range in height from like maybe a couple inches off the ground you know six inches or so off the ground but to getting to like this size and even bigger but they're just smaller in comparison uh, to like a regular uh, regular size general rhododendron. So, so to give you a sense of how versatile this plant can be depending on which species and which cultivar or variety you have they can grow in uh, zones three all the way up to 12 but it can be very cultivar and variety specific so if you're looking to add an azalea to your garden make sure to look at the plant tag at your local nursery and do your homework even before then to make sure that the plant will be hardy enough to grow in your garden in your area. So you guys, we want to show you these. This is actually several azalea plants. Yeah, what do we got here? We got one, two, three. If you look at the stalks coming up, at least three, four, maybe five plants all Goodness. the way around here. Sorry, it's going to get a little bright and sunny over here, yeah. you guys. But basically what's cool is we have this lining, or we have this surrounding, I should say, our, um, a really old dogwood tree. Mm -hmm. And if you follow us on Instagram, you've seen a lot of pictures of this because We've just been so amazed by how beautiful it is this yeah. year. I mean, this this plant, this one right here is just beautiful. And you, if you guys can imagine this spring, it started flowering. It, it started flowering here. Yeah, it started on this side. On it's this cool. side. And then it, the flowers just progressed to open and open and open all the way down and around. And so these are the oldest flowers that we have between all these front azaleas right here that we're showing you on this evergreen azalea. And so the newest flowers are down below where we just were. 
It's so cool to see, because yeah, these are like faded. It was just bright pink, you guys. Mm. It was so pretty. So guys, yeah, azaleas come, their flowers come in so many different colors, basically the whole rainbow, and there's even different shades of those colors. So there's so much to choose from to complement and add to your garden. Okay, you guys, we're in a different section of our yard, and this is probably my most favorite azalea in the entire yard. Look at it's that color. It's so gorgeous. Oh. It's just this light yellow, and it's got this beautiful kind of orange veining inside, or I'm not sure what you would call that yeah, just pattern. Like speckled, speckled spots or the throating on the flower itself, because it's almost a trumpet kind of flower. Yeah, it really is. And then look at, it's got like kind of a, like a salmon almost colored. Oh, that's gorgeous. Kind of look at flower that. Oh, love that flower. progression. This is also a deciduous azalea that we have in our yard. So it does lose its leaves after the season. Um, it blooms about, this is kind of actually one of our earlier bloomers, probably earlier to mid spring. So it has been in bloom for a couple weeks and there's still a couple blooms coming in, but this looks like it's about it this year. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's pretty much done it's opening pretty much up. Done, yeah. Boy, these last so long and we just feel so lucky to have this in oh, our yard. So lucky. Now, so you guys, these are so easy to care for. They need regular water. They really thrive with that. And if you have them in the right conditions and the right sunlight, which um, we'll talk about in a minute, they will grow and thrive. So these guys, like again, this plant is over 50 years old. Um, it has really come back to life um, since we put mulch around the base of it about probably five, four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. So keeping it protected from, you know, the winter conditions and just helping with drainage and whatnot. This, and this mulch has really just enhanced its health. So guys, Allison just told you all about this one, oh, this azalea this one. right here, this deciduous oh, azalea. Let's go over here and as a comparison, keep that picture of the azalea in your mind. Now look at this roadie. This is a rhododendron. Look how much bigger these flowers are. So much bigger. And the leaves too. Yep, the leaves like are just, just huge, so way much larger. bigger. You know, so there, there's right a little here. bit, yeah, we got a little weevil damage. Yeah. And uh, actually azaleas and rhododendrons are both susceptible to uh, not only weevils, but uh, powdery mildew and aphids and white flies. So just look for those, uh, keep an eye out for those Oops. throughout the growing season. But. So yeah, so now we're in another part of our garden, right? Another part of our front yard. We were just over there with that yellow or orange is blooming uh, azalea, deciduous azalea. Here's another deciduous azalea and it has really come back. Now, like Allison said, um, we put down this mulch over many years. It's helped protect not only the roots of these azaleas, but it's actually, you know, with insulation and keeping them cool and insulated from the cold weather too. But it's also provided more nutrients, better soil conditions, and a lot more moisture for them to really thrive. This plant by itself, you can see there's some old cuts here. We've got some pruning to do on some dead wood. But before we prune this back, actually, a lot of this, this plant was almost dead before we actually uh, put down the new mulch and started really trying to help it and water it more and nurture it more. And it's really come back. I mean, it was like maybe half of what it is right now. So, I know, it's looking I mean, pretty good. We're really happy with how these have turned color. out. Oh, so, you know, there, there's always more to do. So yeah, Gosh. I know that color is just beautiful. It's, and it's so much different from the other one you just saw, you guys. So now azaleas and rhododendrons, they like more acidic soils, lower pH soils. Uh, they like partial shade conditions. Some will tolerate full sun conditions, but only in cooler climates with not a real intense sunlight. So keep that in mind when you're placing and looking to put them in your garden. Okay guys, so deciduous azalea, right? Nice you know, nice green leaves, but they lose them in the fall and winter, and then they come back. Well, evergreen azaleas, right behind us, we've got a really bright, bright pink azalea here, and then we've got even more of a, a hot pink or maybe slightly magenta purple over here just to the back of it. And so these are just gorgeous looking plants. And just to show you that variety and color that we have in our yard, and that you can have in your yard too, now you can see up here, we've got some work to do with this azalea, a couple of these azaleas. They're really leggy. They've got lichen and moss grown in them. And you know, just over the last couple of years, they've really gotten kind of nasty. So we got some work to do in that. And basically what we would do is thin this out, try and regrow and re-stimulate nice new growth to kind of fill this in over a couple of years. And then uh, we've also got, if you can see down here, We've got some growth and the understory. It's flowering actually underneath Beautiful. the canopy, main canopy. So guys, with this growth down here, you don't usually want to promote this growth down here because over time it'll keep growing up, right? It'll keep growing out and up. It's going to grow into the main canopy that you already have. And then you're going to have a whole nother mess of problems to deal with. So it's better to just prune that away and, um, and then just have 
uh, the growth up top and direct all the growth up top to keep expanding and growing out up here on this main canopy. So deciduous azalea, evergreen azaleas, roadie right behind it, right? Big, beautiful roadie. Woohoo! See how beautiful and big that is? And just the difference in the leaf size and actually the shape size and the, the flower size and the color. And I mean, you can see right here, you guys, see this, the size difference. Here's the azalea on the left and the roadie on the right. Yep. So. Yep, just, but beautiful plants, and they work so well together. You know, as companion plants, azaleas and rhodes work so well together. They're, they're great companion plants. Um, also, hellebores, like you saw down below uh, before, that we showed you before, um, hellebores work well. We've got a couple of uh, ferns that you can put with them, and also underneath, we've got vinca. All of these are great companion plants to have uh, around and mixed in with your azaleas and rhodes. Yeah, so guys, we're in our backyard. This is the last azalea we wanted to actually show you. It's beautiful, and it, you can see it's got a slightly different color of, uh, of pink flowers there, maybe even a darker, maybe darker pink. What color would you call that, honey? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, it's it's just kind of a hot pink. It's beautiful. But it's, um, it's a little bit different than the ones in the front yard. The mm -hmm. flowers are a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. They are, and the leaves look a little, just a little bit bigger, too, yeah, themselves. They do. So yeah, again, garden you know, Buddha. <laughs> yeah, oh, little Buddha. Buddha. So yeah, I mean, even the uses of these plants, um, you know, along a walkway, uh, maybe a foundational plant in a bed, and then put all your other plants around it, or maybe it's it's part of uh, size differences in a bed for you know creating that layering and just the texture. I mean, use your imagination. These plants are very useful, very beautiful. So besides liking uh, acidic soil, they also like well-draining and organically rich soil too. So if you're gonna add these to your yard it, and it's not uh, well-draining or has a high organic matter in it, you're gonna need to add that in and mix that into the soil, get that modified before you plant these plants in your garden. There really are so many ways you can use azaleas around your landscape. They make a great foundation plant, and that's probably the best part, is you can design with them and use them as, you know, whether they're deciduous or evergreen, you can kind of just design around them. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty much uh, how we think Allison's grandparents uh, used them in their yard yeah. uh, when they first installed them. So we're gonna do the same thing. They're beautiful. They are, we yeah. love them. Oh my gosh, you guys, all the colors. So uh, also uh, make sure you're aware uh, basically all the plant parts, the leaves, the flowers, stems, they're slightly poisonous, they'll upset your stomach, so try not to eat any part of them. So with all that, leave your comments and questions down below for us. We love hearing from you. And make sure to subscribe so you get our latest updates on our videos. And thank you for watching, for being here. We hope that plant chat was helpful today. We love azaleas. Let us know, like Sean said, if you have any questions or comments. Um, we'll be back tomorrow with you live on our weekly Saturday morning garden chat. Yeah. Um, come join us at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We'll be live. We'll be talking about flowering herbs, herbs. tomorrow. Yep, so it's going to be a fun. And we've got a guest appearance from one of our friends, Janice Cox. So Ooh, and a giveaway. Yeah, and a giveaway. Woohoo! So make sure you're there. So with that, you guys, thank you again, and we'll see you next time. See you next time, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.